Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. South Africans experienced another intense period of load shedding this week, with ESCOM declaring stage four on certain days. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss the reasons and the outlook. Hi Terence. Hi Fnall. Load shedding was introduced with very little warning. Why? Well, I think this is the state we're in now. We know that the coal fleet is just uh, very badly maintained. It's in a very precarious position. So even though we went through a period of relative stability after a load shedding earlier in the year and a very intense year of load shedding, our most intense ever last year, there are days where a number of units just disappear from the system. And on Monday, after a very bad weekend, Eskim had 4,500 megawatts of capacity lost just from the morning to the afternoon. And that's when they went and uh, declared the first stage three at that stage of load shedding, and then that was intensified later in the week to stage four. So we're just in that same position where the plants are not, uh, they're vulnerable, they have not been stabilized. The maintenance backlog is, is still very, very large, and uh, catching that up is gonna take many, many years uh, to catch up. And there are some units that may be past the point of no return and are just very, very vulnerable. The very disappointing aspect is the continual poor performance of the commercial units at Kusile and, uh, and some of the units at Madupi. That's really, very really disappointing and they continually make the system very vulnerable. And then on top of it, we have uh, Kuberg out. Uh, one of the units, Unit 2 is out for extended maintenance. Um, and then as soon as that one comes back, uh, we'll have another extended maintenance for the steam generator replacement for Unit 1. Now, we were supposed to do the steam generator replacement for, for Unit 2 as well, but because of, again, I think uh, skills and contracting model issues at Eskom, uh, there's just uh, slippages all the time, and they weren't ready, basically, to take those steam generators out. So they're going to do the other maintenance, and then next year, uh, in August, we're going to have another extended period of maintenance, which, you know, with uh, over 900 megawatts out for long periods and, f and basically for the whole year this year, it makes uh, it important that the coal fleet performs and it's just not performing. ESCOM also resorted to burning huge volumes of diesel. Is this sustainable? It's definitely not sustainable. I mean, we know that we've been resorting to diesel for many years and uh, the sort of current financial year that we're in, 2021-2022, uh, which ends at the end of this month, Eskim would have spent directly about 6 billion rand on diesel, and indirectly because it buys um, electricity from Avon and Diesel, which are also diesel fueled open cycle gas turbines, it's going to spend another 3 billion rand on that. And you must re remember that the regulator for its direct use has only really given Eskom around a billion rand for this current financial year. And for the next financial year, which Eskom indicated when it applied for their 20.5% increase, they were expecting a much higher capacity factor from the OCGT plants of around 7%. Uh, nurses granted them a 3% capacity factor, which means probably around 3 billion rand. But as you can see, uh, they're going to need to re rely on diesel quite a bit. So I think 3 billion rand is not going to cut it. So they're going to be spending probably more like double that. And that's directly. And then during this latest part of load shedding, we were using uh, uh, all 20 open cycle gas turbine units. That's both the Eskom and the non Eskom units at times during different stages during the weekend. And then when stage three, stage four, and then back to stage three and now stage two, you know, we've been burning diesel to try and limit the, the intensity of the load shedding. But that gets to a point when you're burning one million litres a day, uh, it gets to a point where those supply lines get stretched and Eskom doesn't have the money to burn that and they had to therefore intensify the level of load shedding to sort of give them space to replenish the diesel stocks as well as to replenish the upper dams at the pump storage schemes which are already they are an emergency reserves. We need to have those in place. Otherwise, well, the only lever that Eskom has is load shedding. And as Eskom said, you know, if you don't have those levers available, you add another three stages of load shedding. So they're very important to maintain them at a steady level. And that's why the system operator and Eskom were erring on the side of, of rather replenishing those reserves, building up those stocks, 
ra and rather resorting to more intense load shedding this week, even as, as some of the coal units came back. So it's a very unsustainable position. It's very intensive burning of diesel. And now on top of it, and it's been for a while, we've, we see the fuel prices generally are really spiking. Uh, they were spiking just in terms of the economic recovery, and, uh, but now they are really at an intense level of spark uh, with the Ukraine uh, conflict, with the inv Russia's invasion of Ukraine. We see that energy and fuel prices around the world are really, really ratcheting up. We saw oil hitting close to $140 uh, a barrel. You know, this is going to have major implications at the pumps and uh, we already saw it as motorists this month. Next month's going to be much, much worse because that, we have, that hadn't factored in the spark that came along with the invasion of Ukraine. So we're going to see much higher fuel prices in the system. And Eskom also has to take those prices. We are an importer of diesel. They buy it from Petro, Petro SA, the Astron refinery uh, in the Western Cape. And that, that diesel is imported. The, that has to be passed through in some way. They can't pass it through because a tariff is set for, for this year. But at some point, that's going to bite. What is the outlook for the rest of this year? I think what I mentioned about Kuberg being off Unit 2 currently and then Unit 1 straight thereafter means that we will have continually this 900 megawatt plus out of the system, which is, was as usual a sta stable supply. We know we haven't built at the, the, the scale necessary over the last number of years. You know, if we had just been procuring at that sort of 1,000 between 1,000 and 2,000 megawatts a year renewables that was always planned, but we had that long six, seven year hiatus in procurement, so we haven't built uh, the, the capacity. And you can see we actually have an energy shortage in the system. You know, the fact that uh, uh, Eskin this week was using open cycle gas turbines to help replenish its upper dams is, is really shows we have an energy crisis. That's what renewables would have given us. It would have given us energy in the system to make sure that we could replenish our dams and as we introduce battery energy storage to make sure that we can charge those batteries now. I mean, we're using diesel to replenish the dams. It's, it's quite outrageous. In fact, that's not what it's there for. So we really need to get more energy into the system. We have had some regulatory reforms, but th there seems to be so much red tape still around that. People can't actually get to the point of registering their project, even though we've had lots of announcements. They can't actually register, never mind license. You know, you can't register because you need to have firm PPAs. You have to have all these other documentations in front of the regulator before they'll even let you through the door. So something needs to give there so that we can get the, the miners, can get their projects uh, through the system, through the uh, registration system. We really need to move faster on the public procurement programs, the, the REAP program. You know, there will be announcements late next month both the risk mitigation and next, but really we're far behind the schedule that's outlined in even the, the integrated resource plan of 2019. We're behind schedule there, and that's undersized in terms of what we need on the renewables and on the battery storage front. It really is undersized by major, major percentages. So we really need to have a proper rethink. We need to realize that we're in a serious emergency because Eskom can maybe get this energy availability factor at some point stable. At the moment, it's nowhere near stable. It's below 60%. I think that must be historic lows out of the coal fleet, and that's why we're in this crisis. So through diligent maintenance, they can maybe, for some of the units, get it up to a more stable level, but it's not going to be at the 70-plus uh, levels that are baked into the integrated resource plan. Therefore, we have to revise the re resource plan just on that factor. We need far more uh, electricity uh, capacity coming into the system than what's outlined in the current integrated resource plan. We need that updated urgently. And there's an absolute lack of urgency. There's a, a sort of a religious holding on, uh, almost like this is dogma, that this uh, RRP is the plan and it's we must now write it out as per this when it's totally inappropriate for what we need. So we need some real urgency shown at the cabinet level, policy maker level, to try and get the, the, the commensurate urgency to the crisis. It's a big crisis and the outlook for this year, I think, is more intensive load shedding than last year. We really started on the back foot 
And with, as with Kuburg out and with all these uh, maintenance backlogs, I think we're going to see higher levels of load shedding this year than we did in 2021, which was our worst year ever. How do we get ourselves out of this crisis? It's all about, I think, political will. And the political will uh, is, is not there at the moment to say, honestly, how do we get ourselves to a point where we deal with the short, medium and long term. We don't have a short term plan other than relying on Eskom maintenance program, which is not working. We need a short term plan that really gets more electricity onto the system. And that really is really about the non uh, centralized procurement program. That's about getting uh, the mining companies, the manufacturing companies, the smelters, all these other companies to do their, uh, em their embedded, gen their distributed generation investment to really unblock whatever is blocking those projects, uh, to let residents to do their own thing as well, and to have a way of remunerating them if they overbuild. So if they can feed in, those are quick wins. On the centralised procurement, we have to deliver as per schedule. And in fact, we have to, we've got such a backlog, we have to ex accelerate the schedule. So we have to have more bidding rounds, um, and we, we need to start procuring at a much faster pace than we are. We maybe have to combine bidding rounds. And uh, really, uh, it, it does require a whole different uh, attitude at the top, and we're not seeing it yet. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching, and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.